from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, May 12th to Saturday, May 18th. Okay, so last week, pretty quick to summarize, we had the new moon in Taurus pop off on the 7th, and that was pretty much it. Now, things have been heavy, things have been weighted, things have been a little bit frustrating, if you will, due to the lack of activity, I would say we're in a holding period at this time, and well, people don't really enjoy being put on pause. Now, that new moon in Taurus is definitely anchoring us into new realities, into new versions of self, into new paths and directions. But again, most people still very confused on what this path, what this direction actually is. We won't be gaining that certainty, that clarity, if you will, until later this week, after Mercury actually shifts out of his post retrograde shadow period. And of course, he will be moving into a brand new energy. Let's talk about that. So yes, this week, we have that post retrograde shadow finally coming to an end on the 13th. And then we dive right into the 15th. That is when we have the first quarter moon taking place in Leo energy. So again, the first quarter moon of any lunar cycle is a point of action a point of choice, a point of decision. From the new moon up until the first quarter moon, we're gaining momentum, we're gaining information, we're experimenting with different thoughts, different options, if you will. By the time we reach that first quarter moon, we are at a point where some certainty is actually coming at us, where we feel like we know the right choice or decision to make. And in some cases, where there's actually an action that presents itself in order for us to make a move. Because it's taking place in Leo energy, this is going to be a major activation of the heart space. Leo energy is the heart center, the soul center. It is where our real, true, raw, authentic self resides. And a lot of the times, because of a lot of the masking that we have to do, a lot of the egoic layering that we have to do just to fit in with society, a lot of the times we aren't operating from our authentic selves. But this is a heart activation to put us in a boldness, a bravery, a certain amount of courage that we've been lacking. And because of this, we are going to feel like we know what to do, like we have some sort of of let's call it instruction manual being downloaded into our heart space and we're being called to pursue a path, a choice, a decision point, a direction point that we may not understand intellectually, but there's this huge pull emotionally and intuitively speaking. So that just happens, you know, a couple of hours prior to Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we are expressing ourselves, He's moving out of Aries energy, he's moving into Taurus. So first of all, um, you know, Mercury's time through Aries energy has been very pressurized because of that retrograde. Uh, we are going to have Mercury retrograde here, you know, in 2025 in Aries energy as well. So pay attention to what this particular Mer Mercury retrograde was all about, because we're likely going to have to retrace our steps early 2025, dating back to this particular sector of our lives. But nonetheless, Mercury in that Aries energy, we're just all over the place. We're scatterbrained. We're exploring different ideas. There's too many windows popping off. Aggressive communication, definitely where the anger of the collective came out to play during that retrograde as well. Um, we're settling into Taurus energy. So when Mercury moves into Taurus energy, first of all, we slow down. Okay, that's going to help us out because it's going to help us to be able to focus. And that's what Mercury being in Taurus energy is all about is putting those tunnel vision goggles on so that we can just focus on what we have to do, what needs to be done. This is where we are going to be very deliberate, not only with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our mental energy, but with our words. This is when we are going to plan. This is when we're going to strategize. Again, Taurus energy is where we bring something new to life, where we create something new. And in our mental plane, this is the ideas that we've been tossing around through this Aries energy that we really couldn't make a whole lot of sense of. And so once Mercury clears his post retrograde shadow period, first of all, we're going to be full up to speed. We're going to be moving into new territory, not really looking back, but we are going to be building upon structuring this new idea, this new framework, these new options. 
And so, yeah, the mental plane is definitely going to slow down. And for some people, it may be too slow. But again, energy management is key here. Um, and, you know, we're really going to be put in a totally different frame of mind, a different, I'm going to call it collaborative energy, a different workhorse energy, if you will, um, planning and strategizing logically and practically is definitely going to be a thing. We have to stabilize in our thoughts, slow that energy pace down from that Aries energy and get very real with what it is that actually needs to be done. So this is actually the last full week of Taurus season. We will be moving into Gemini energy here on the 20th. And so, you know, we have some things to wrap up. And I know for many people, this Taurus energy was a little bit too slow and steady, kind of bringing a halt, if you will, to some of the momentum that we thought we were gaining prior to Taurus season. But again, that was just Eclipse energy putting us on a fast forward to steroids. Um, but this week, we're definitely going to feel, I'm going to say, the frustration a little bit more just because we're nearing the end of this particular transit. Uh, the want, need, and desire to move on is very real. The energy, the efforts have been a struggle to actually get up to a certain level where we can be kind of productive in any kind of way. And so the ants in our pants are growing, let's just say. Um, the stabilizing energy has done just that, but it's almost sta stabilized us to a snail's pace, and that's not really boding well for too many people. We have some major energy coming at us the minute that we get thrown into Gemini season, so I'll continue to kind of preach at the fact that you're going to need to lean into enjoying this Taurus energy because you're going to look back on Taurus season and say, man, I wish I would have just, you know, been content and just chilled out and just enjoyed my downtime because the Gemini energy is just going to throw us for another very busy, very chaotic kind of loop. So that is what we're facing this week. Now, I do have a couple of other things that I want to talk about in relation to this week. However, I have a couple of things that I would like to address first and foremost, starting with a thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below. Thank you for being here in the live chat. If you're with me Friday evening, I truly appreciate that. And as you know, my channel has taken an absolute hit over the last couple of weeks. I want to say months, but realistically, it's been a real drop in interest. Now, I talked about that a couple of times in the past where... You know, I guess I'm going to go on a rant. So, you know, buckle up. Anyways, y'all, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that I was not very hopeful moving into eclipse season, that the collective was where it is that we needed to be in order to actually align with the highest timeline. And you would know, especially if you've been listening to me, but I think it's been very apparent for everyone. If you take a good look around and you're in touch with the energies, that I was absolutely right about that. Um, post eclipse season, there's been a huge part of the collective that's just done. Done with the healing journey, done with doing the work. I think a lot of people are just waiting for the world to end and just kind of, you know, moving through it. I think that, you know, there is a huge drop off of, I'm going to call it light workers. And I'm going to say, you know, it's not that we're in a disappointing point of despair because I don't think it's that. However, the lack of interest that people have now in doing the work and being them best selves is definitely impacting people like myself, creators, truthers, you know, mentors, whatever label you want to throw at me. I'm not really a fan of labels. However, I'm in a particular position as I know other people are out there trying to get the collective to where it is that we need to be. And it's having a major impact on you know the financial status of people like myself and so yes youtube has been messing with my channel and to give you uh an instance or a situation a circumstance that i know for sure is being manipulated um okay so normally post this past month i usually get about 100 new subscribers and that's very organic that's very natural that's kind of where it's been at um over this past month i've dropped down to like 20 30 maybe even in the run of a month which is just absolutely ridiculous 
But the true telltale to that is that it took me two weeks to gain three subscribers to put me at the 5,300 subscriber mark. Now, as soon as I got into the 5,300, suddenly I lost 20 subscribers, which again, I don't think there are actually people out there unsubscribing. I think it's YouTube. And so I went back and forth and back and forth over this past week around this 5,300 subscriber mark. Now, let me just also say that, you know, I tried to strike a healthy balance because I don't believe that subscriber numbers are necessarily that important. I'm not here for the likes. I'm not here for the numbers, but it also is very indicative and directly correlates to my financial situation and circumstance. And so, you know, I've been trying to tweak some things because I know that there's a lack of interest. I know that everybody's exhausted. I know that there's this huge, you know, group of people that just don't want to do the work. And so I've been trying to like kind of manipulate my services. Again, I put out uh, the mini reading again because it was a short, concise way to answer some direct answers that people want to know in reference to their chart. Um, yeah, there has been some people to take advantage of that particular session, but not as many as I thought there would be, which again is an, a direct indicator, not only to me that I got to do something in order to stabilize my finances if people are just not interested anymore, but also again, that there's a huge drop off of interest in this healing journey. People are exhausted. People are confused. I know that the eclipse season, but a whole group of people in spiritual psychosis. So, I mean, you know, we have we have that group of the collective just trying to figure out what realm and reality they're living in. But what I'm getting at here is that the disconnect that many people have felt since that eclipse energy is very real. And the disconnect is because, again, we time warped, we jump timelines. They're not the highest timeline. Uh, they're not the lowest one either. However, you know, staying around that middle point is only going to prolong the amount of energy that the, the ones that are still here doing the work have to continue to hold the space and hold the line for other people to wake up and to start doing the work again. It's all very exhausting. And, you know, those of us that are still holding the line and anchoring in the grid and doing the work within ourselves, we're exhausted too, you know, but we have this warrior spirit where we know that there's no other choice but to continue doing what it is that we've been doing. You know, the mission hasn't been complete yet. You'll know when the mission has been completed because you won't be here anymore. You will return home to source. And so there's a there's just a disconnect. There's a detachment going on in the collective right now. And it's making people really question themselves, the reality that they find themselves in and how much time and energy they actually want to spend on these particular concepts. Now, I'm going somewhere with this, OK? Uh, the reason why I'm kind of building this up is because I had a couple of people ask me if I was going to talk about, you know, the solar flares and the CMEs that are expected to hit the earth this weekend. And, you know, on one one part of me is like, OK, yeah, I guess I should be bringing more attention to this influx of energies because I guess that's what people want to talk about. But on the other token, it, it's not important and, and I mean that in the nicest way, but let me just explain to you, first of all, solar flares and CMEs been popping off the sun for eons, okay? That's what the whole point of this is. Secondly, uh, the big solar flares, the big CMEs that are coming towards the earth is a good indicator that guess what? We need these bursts of energies because y'all, and I don't mean y'all as in like you guys listening because you guys listening are probably the only people actually doing the work on this earth plane right now, but like y'all as in the collective, Y'all shit the bed. Y'all need a little pick me up. Y'all need a good zap. Y'all need to be rendered freaking useless in order to be reminded of the work that you all are avoiding and doing. And so like, I'm always conflicted. I will always be conflicted because to me, I don't pay attention to any of this stuff anymore. Uh, first of all, the more time that you spend intellectualizing these particular concepts, the less time you're actually spending in the flow of your higher self. You cannot be using your intellectual brain 
and intuiting the energy itself, those are those are two complete different parts of self. So the more hype, again, that we give these particular events, and especially for the people in the States, y'all have been talking about the grid going down. Oh, the eclipse is going to make the grid go down. Oh, this energy burst is going to make the grid go down. Please understand that this is another version of a distraction in order for people to be consumed on the things that mean nothing in the grand scheme of things, just waiting for man, you know, collective man to come in and shut the whole grid down. If you all think that the grid is going to go down due to a solar flare, then congratulations, you got duped again. They're setting you up for these, let's call them metaphysical, scientific, you know, solar bursts that yes, do have the capability of knocking out an electrical grid, but are they going to? Uh, I'm going to say 98% nope, okay? If and when the grid goes down, it's going to be a man flipping a switch. That's how this is, this is working. So again, to see like all week, like, yes, okay, if you're a sensitive being, if you've been doing the work, you don't need Facebook or Instagram or the Schumann resonance to tell you that the energy is fluctuating. You should be able to feel that within yourself. Okay. That's the first thing. And if you do need this anticipation of, oh, I seen on, you know, I seen on social media that there's a big CME coming or there's a big X flare expected for this weekend. What are you doing? First of all, you're intellectualizing that. So you're using your ego brain. You're not using your intuition or your higher self at all. So again, failed that mission. Uh, secondly, you're contributing to the collective hype. And if you get into that collective hype, then you are essentially creating a state of uh, an extra layer, if you will, of this spiritual psychosis that the collective is already far too deep in. And thirdly, you're not allowing yourself to be in a state of being. If you were just being, you would be able to navigate the fluctuations of these energies without somebody telling you that there's a huge fluctuation of energy. And so I get a little bit torn each and every single time that I get asked to talk about certain things because I understand that there's a major group of people that are still on these concepts that think that they're exciting and think that this is going to be a major change and the anticipation of it. Again, it's just another distraction. It's distracting you from the work. It's keeping you in that intellectual part of your brain that is keeping you rooted in this ego self. And this is what we're here to transcend people. So again, a little bit of frustration on my part because I never know um, how to respectfully talk about these things, knowing that there's a huge group of people out in our community, especially here for the energy boutique that are at different, let's call it stages of their healing journey. And when you come into your healing journey and you're freshly awakened, all of these concepts are super exciting and, ooh, you know, mystical and blah, 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 blah. When you're in it for a long time, you understand that it doesn't matter. Like it legit doesn't matter. So yes, okay, we're talking about it. The CME, yes, there's solar flares. Yes, there's going to be X flares. Yes, it's accumulating around a weekend that also, you know, side note, people still don't understand that the solar flares are in a direct response to the astrological bodies coming together, creating these energetic bursts in the cosmos. I'm talking specifically about the sun in Uranus Okay, the great awakener trying to sh give us this blast of energy to shift our consciousness into new levels that people continue to miss because they stay in the intellectual size part of the brain. It's a big loop. And so, yeah, it's going to have an impact on ascension symptoms as they always do. We're in solar cycle 25. We've already broken records for that solar cycle and what they had anticipated. Should we be surprised? No. Should we be excited? No. Should we give any time, energy, attention to these particular concepts? No, not really. Not in my opinion. If you're living here and you're doing the work and you're, you know, you're aware of the energies, again, you shouldn't have to be focused on the anticipation of what these events could mean. You shouldn't get excited about this stuff. It literally is a non-starter. You just have to be your own damn self in your own body, regulating your own energy, your own emotions with or without this disclaimer that there's some sort of energy coming our way. So yeah, that's my mini rant. Okay. Um, I do have to, I do have to go back and finish my little homework 
uh, lesson though. Um, I started with the thank yous. I went off onto a tangent. Okay, so I'm gonna reel it back in. Uh, I wanna thank those of you that jumped over to Patreon. I had a lot of new, albeit free members, but new members jump over there to sample the paid content. I thank you so much for that. We're building a community of wisdom of knowledge. And you know, the, the first step is to try something new. Many people resist jumping into new platforms, new apps, I get it. Um, but for those of you that have taken the leap over to Patreon, I thank you so much for being there. And to my existing Patreons, of course, your love and support is super, super appreciated, especially uh, with, you know, the fluctuation, if you will, in the collective and, and losing a whole group of people to just going back to, you know, basically exist without really existing. Uh, but nonetheless, the love and support over on that particular platform is very, very much appreciated. And... I just want to put in here that as we go through this week, pay special attention to when I launch the Gemini season e-guide. And of course, if you're over on Patreon and you're the right kind of tier over there, that's going to be available to you probably towards the end of this week as we wrap to our season up and we venture into Gemini season. And again, there are, I just, uh, I just altered my calendar again to make some of those mini reading spots available. If you have a question or you're struggling with a choice point and you want a chart consult, a quick kind of response to that, that is the session to book. Okay, so now I'm moving away from the homework section back to my rants about the ascension symptoms. So what can we expect from this, you know, a very interesting weekend of high influx of energies? Well, you know, pretty much the same as any other day of the week when there is a lot going on in the cosmos and there are important interactions taking place and there are, let's call it residual energy effects that are going to manifest in the physical form. Let me just say that over this past week, um, a lot of people complaining of headaches. Um, I, again, guys, I'm not trying to bitch and complain here, but like literally I put out daily energy forecasts and the day that everybody was complaining that they had a headache and there was so much pressure in their head and they couldn't think straight and everything was dizzy and blurry and everything else. What did we have going on? Oh, that's right. We had Mercury and Uranus coming together in an interaction that was going to put so much pressure on our headspace. Why? Are people surprised when these ascension symptoms happen? It's spelt out for you. You should be expecting it at this point. You should not wonder why you wake up and feel the way that you do. The very first thing that you should do is say, oh, well, first of all, I think we talked about this in the ascension forecast last week. Maybe I should go back, take a listen to that. Secondly, hell, maybe I should check in with the energy forecast this, like today and, and this week to see what I should be expecting and what's going on here today. And oh, yeah, Mercury, Uranus, the higher level of our intellect, the lower level of our intellect, our whole entire headspace is being pressurized, thus the headache. Nonetheless, I will continue to what I feel like. I feel like I repeat myself. I hate repeating myself. I feel like I'm nagging all the time. I hate nagging all the time. But at the same time, it just baffles me when I have like, you know, I, I think I woke up, I, what was it, Wednesday or Thursday? Um, no, it would have been Wednesday. Um, and had all of these people complaining in, in my inbox about, you know, that their head hurts or their bobblehead syndrome or what's going on in the cosmos my head my head feels like it's going to explode what's going on and i'm just sitting here and i'm like does 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 nobody listen to the forecast i don't know i don't know how to be any more clear i painted it out i i, I pretty much laid it all out you know mercury and uranus you can't get any more head pressurizing than that Anywho, I digress the head pressure is likely going to continue why well because mercury is clearing his post retrograde shadow period. Let's let's start there. But we also have a lot of mercurial energy building up this week. Why? Well, because Mercury not only is is clearing his post retrograde shadow period, but he's moving into a brand new energy. So there's going to be some intensity there. Um, like I previously mentioned, we have the Sun and Uranus's conjunction coming uh, to a head, and so that's going to be a huge amount of not only head pressure, but central nervous system stimulation. So you want to talk about anxiety, you want to talk about nervousness, you want to talk about palpitations, you want to talk about all of that, put that on the calendar. That's what you have going on this week. There's going to be a lot of jitteriness. 
there's going to be a lot of head pressure. That head pressure is not only going to be like, oh my God, my head feels like it's going to explode, but it's also going to have a moving worm headache. We talked about this, you know, before. It's like this pressurized system, but yet you can't really call it a headache because it moves from one place to the other. And again, if you want to know why, look up the cranial nerve system in your brain and understand what that actually is stimulating and attached to as far as the physical form and the different organs go in your body. That's where you can tell that the energy blockage is. That's when you can start working on that area of the body, release that particular emotion or tension or built up energy blockage in some way. And then lo and behold, hmm, headache ain't so bad anymore. This is where we got to get to guys. Like I'm not sure I'm not sure what else to do to like lay out how you do the work, but this is what we do. Like we wake up, we feel that there's some sort of discontent energy in our bodies. We feel that through ailments or discomfort. The very first thing that you should do is be like, hmm, what does this area of my body represent? Connect that to a chakra. Connect that to an emotion. Do the work. Unpack it. Get the vibration, the frequency up. Move it out of your body. We move on to the next. This is where we're at. And if you're not doing the work every freaking day, and sometimes, depending on the energy fluctuations, you have to do it multiple times a day. This is what it is to be aware of your physical form, of the energy in your body. This is what it is to listen to the messages that your body gives you. This is where you are in control of whether or not you're going to sit in discomfort or you're going to do something to be better, right? So again, as I previously mentioned, we're moving into a testing period on whether or not we actually have what it takes to be gifted with the title, with the power of creator. And if you're not able to fix or heal or release or alleviate the energy in your physical body, then why should you be given the power to actually create and manifest and restructure the physical realm, the materialistic realm? If you can't even exercise the discipline, the willpower over your own damn self, then you shouldn't have the power to be able to restructure and redesign your physical form. You know, this is why we've gone through exams. This is boot camp. This is training. And if you're not at the particular place already where you're waking up and being, oh, my, and, and I'm going to use, I had a, a beautiful client who was very open, very receptive, and was definitely ready to do what they had to do in order to fix the problem. I had a client wake up. They said, oh, my pinky finger, it's swollen, can't move it huge amounts of pain there. Okay, my hand is okay, but it's my pinky finger. What am I supposed to do? So what are you supposed to do? Okay, so my pinky finger hurts. Well, first of all, let's look up and see what the pinky finger actually relates to. Let's see the meridian lines. Let's see the astrological correspondence that it connects to. Let's see the emotion that it connects to. What does your pinky finger represent? Okay, so then you do the research. You got to do it for yourself. There's no good in somebody telling you, oh, it means this. This is what you need to do. That's the easy way out. We're not doing easy. Okay, we're warriors. You got to boss up. You got to do the work. And so you need to be looking up the correspondence, the relation, the energetic manifestation of what the pinky finger is all about. And this particular person did that, found the solution, had an aha moment to the energetic and emotional connection that the pinky finger lends and immediately did what they could do as far as natural and holistic remedies in order to alleviate the physical discomfort by bringing the emotional awareness into consciousness and focusing in on having the power and control to do something about it. As far as I'm concerned, that particular person passed the test with flying colors. Good for you. You get a sticker, you get a cookie, you're moving on to the next level. But this is the type of awareness that we all need to be in each and every single day. Yes, it's exhausting. Okay, people are like, oh no, that's too much. That's too much. I'm just going to go to the doctor. I'm going to let them write me a prescription for this medication that's really just going to cause more harm than it's going to do good. And then I'm going to wonder once I'm done the medication or done the therapy, why it isn't working and why I continue to have the energy. Well, because you haven't connected it to the emotional dysfunction that taking place in your body. Okay, so we all got to do better. This is it. 
Pluto's retrograde in Aquarius energy. You got to do better. You got to get in. You got to fight it out with yourself. Okay. The laziness, the, oh, it's too much work. Oh, I'm exhausted. Oh, I'll just go to the doctor. That's the egoic programming. If you want to double down and bet on the ego, you go right ahead. We're not here for that. Okay. We're not here for that. We're here to grow. We're here to evolve. We're here to understand that we're alchemists. And the clear way of doing that, what is an alchemist? It's the ability to change and transform one thing from one state into the other. Okay, so if you're an energy worker, you know that the energy is alive and well, you know that it's impacting your physical form, you know that we're going through ascension symptoms as we attempt to reach new levels of awareness and consciousness. And that's all ascension is, by the way, we're not going anywhere other than up in our awareness and our consciousness. And so we have to have full awareness, full power, full control over the physical form. If you do not, you need to. So we, again, we're at the end of boot camp here, guys. We're being tested. We're going through exams. If you fail these exams, it's only you that you got to deal with, you know. Um, but at the same time, like, we we have to be doing better. I am just... I always feel like I'm like Betty the bully in these little rants sometimes because I'm always just like, oh, well, you got to do better and you got to do the work and you got to do this and you got to do that. And this is disappointing and yada, yada. I'm trying to keep it real. Is anyone out there actually like happy and feeling good and feeling content and everything is going well in the world and everything is happy go lucky and rainbows and butterflies? Because let me just tell you, if you're answering yes, you're spiritually bypassing because this is not the time or the place on this earth plane to be in that particular state of mind. OK, that's not authentic. That is a false sense of reality, therefore adding to the spiritual psychosis that is currently going on to the collective. Give your head a shake. It's time to be a human. OK. So we really have to kind of double down and we have to understand that we are supernatural humans. Many of us still operating just under that human label. We haven't activated that supernatural part yet because again, you got to do the work. Okay, so this headache, this pressure, this moving headache, let's say, is also going to be creating some situations in our ears. So yes, you may get clicking, popping, that high pitch frequency, especially when some of those frequencies are coming in a little bit stronger than normal base rate. However, I feel like there is a huge potential of that, I'm going to call it ear congestion. So whether it's a buildup of wax or whether it's like an itchiness in your ear, almost to your brain that you just can't itch. Um, it could even manifest as an earache, or if you're not good with, you know, troubleshooting your body, then it could actually turn into an ear infection. Why? Because your lymph nodes are right there. And people are just not understanding that we have a detox system already like automatically happening in our body, that when you have a buildup of energies in your physical form, it is likely because the detox system, the lymph node system is not operating at its optimal capacity. What can you do? In order to keep that lymph node channel up and running, well, you can do massage, you can be a little bit more active, you can pay attention to where it is that discomfort is building in your physical body and actually do something about it, um, you know, depending on the area in the body in which this discomfort is happening, that's going to be a telltale on different activities that you can do to try and break up that energy and get things kind of flowing again. But nonetheless, there's a lot of pressure in the head. It's going to spill over to the ear. Um, our sinuses are likely going to be a little bit more on the drier side, I would say. You know how sometimes like you can have sinus pain and sinus pressure due to like congestion and like fluid buildup and just like basically too much snot in your head. Well, it's not that. It's kind of like our bodies are getting dried out. And so you can have sinus symptoms and sinus pain due to having too dry of a nasal passage. So what do you do? Well, you add moisture back into the air. You do some sinus rinses. You know, it's not hard. You just, you, you, you figure out what the problem is and you come up with a solution. And that's what we need to be doing. Anyways, that particular tension can definitely affect uh, the rigidity, the stiffness, if you will, in our neck. Uh, it may actually, you know, depending on where you're at with your ability to, to heal yourself, it could go further down the shoulders. Now we're going to feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. And if you're feeling shoulder discomfort, 
then that's a good question to ask yourself. What is it energetically, emotionally that you are carrying on your shoulders that is not yours to carry? You know, start there. Like just simple questions. Be asking yourself questions all the time. What is that? Why does it feel that way? Where does that stem from? What can I do to alleviate it? How can I stand in my power to fix it? Where, you know, the whole like the head bones connected to the shoulder bone type of thing. If you need to sing that song in your head, be playful and do so. But you need to be asking yourself what's going on in your body. You need to be checking in, doing a vibe check all the time. If you downloaded the e-guides for the Zodiac seasons, which you should, because that's like the Zodiac season Bible that's going to keep you ahead of the energy and in alignment with the energy, um, you will know that there are very particular vibe check sections in those e-guides that are designed to have you checking in with yourself as we're moving through these alterations and adjustments of energy. And so the sinuses are going to be impacted. The lymph node is the real reason for that. So again, you can do a lot of things for the lymph nodes. We're on the dry side of things this time around, um, for whatever reason, not really sure. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say that. We're in, we're in earth, there's a lot of earth. There's not a whole lot of water. And when we're lacking water in the chart, we're on the dry side. Just as when we're kind of got too much water going on, that's when we have snot. That's when we have, you know, phlegm. That's when we have a lot of that, uh, those secretion builds up. Now we're in dry season of earth. And so you know what dry season of earth looks like. And so we're seeing this uh, in our mucosa. We're seeing this in our skin. Our skin has been going through major changes as of late. There's been a lot of dry patches emerging, itchy dry patches emerging, different areas of the body. But there's new freckles or moles or sunspots or maybe just like breakouts, whichever way you want to look at it. There's a lot of changing indica indicator or markers on our face and Coming through the eclipse portal, uh, I was, you know, constantly advising that you should pay special attention to your face, to your image, to the visual, especially what's going on behind the eyes because our eyes were changing as well. That was just part and parcel of the level up and of the, let's call it uh, growth spurt of the visual spectrum that we were kind of being opened up to. There's just there's an adjustment period that we're anchoring in. We're in Taurus season. This is an earth sign. And so things are low and slow and things are very, I'm going to say present and in our face and very heavy, very rigid, very dry. And that manifests in a pretty blah attitude. What do I mean by that? Well, you got the blahs. Like you want to do that? Nah. Want to do that? Nah. Want to eat that? Nah. Not really. What do you want to do? Nothing. Okay, and then we wake up and we're like, oh, great, this again. Again or still? Because if it was happening again, it would mean that you got away from that particular, you know, pattern, behavior, whatever the case may be, and then it arrives again. I don't know about y'all, but I wake up to the same day. It's almost like Groundhog Day here in Taurus season, where it's like, oh, this again, or is this still? We are, again, growing very bored, very discontent with this particular energy. That's what happens moving through Taurus season, especially when we're nearing the end of Taurus season, which we are trying to wrap up throughout the course of this week. And so everybody's kind of like in this funk and it's not like a depressive funk. It's not like a happy funk. It's not any kind of funk other than we're in a blah state. Like we're a little bit tired of waiting. We're still trying to have hopes and wishes and, you know, trust, let's say that things are going to shift. But again, the monotony is kind of getting to us. So it's the same old, same old. Again, earth energy is about the mundane. The mundane is very repetitive and very non-exciting, non-inspiring. This is what stabilization is all about. This is what grounding work is all about. This is what being present is all about. It's not fun. It's not exciting. It is boring. It is mundane. And so we're growing to be a little bit, I'm going to say, uh, bored with that. Now, as I previously talked about, the first quarter moon in Leo is going to be a little bit of, I'm going to say, a shift in energy just because we are uh, growing towards an action point, a decision point. Um, there is going to be a heart activation in order for us to kind of, you know, get a grip, grow up, boss up. And let me just say this. 
it's more of an attitude shift as in F it. Let's do it. Let's try it. You know what I mean? Like, meh, we're bored. We're blah. Let's try it. Anything to spice life up, anything to kind of, you know, make life just semi exciting at this point. F it. Let's do it. Let's try it. What's the worst that could happen, right? The worst that could happen right now is that we do nothing and we continue to stay in this holding pattern. That's the worst that could happen. So anything that pushes you outside of the boundaries of this particular monotony, we should definitely do just that. Now, let me give you a disclaimer because I don't want you all just acting buck wild out there and then coming back and saying, oh, I messed things up. You said it was OK to make a change. Blah, blah, blah. OK, use your brain. OK, we got to be in alignment here. I don't know how many times I've said it. Our heart and our head has to be in alignment before we can make a change outside of ourselves. So this isn't acting on impulse. That would be ridiculous. This isn't just like throwing caution to the wind and taking a risk. We're not really in that particular mind frame. But when I say to you that we have all been percolating on making a change, big or small, doesn't matter. And there's some sort of resistance preventing us from initiating the, I'm going to call it preliminary steps to making said change. And there's some sort of resistance there. When we get into the effort, let's try it, let's wing it, let's do it attitude. We're acting upon something that we've been percolating on for a very long time. So this isn't something new. It's not something whimsical. It's not something that, you know, curveball, wild card energy. It's just we reach a certain point where like, you know what, we're tired of thinking about it. We're tired of debating it. Um, we're never going to know if it feels right unless we take the initial steps to at least try to see if it's going to feel right. This is the point where we're going to get, you know, with that first quarter moon in Leo and there's likely going to be a little bit of a shift, not only in our circumstances, but again, a shift in our mood and our attitude first and foremost. So the shift, the energy shift that I think is going to be the indicator, let's say that we're breaking out of the holding pattern and we're moving into something new is the waves of goosebumps, the wave of, I'm going to call it emotion, the wave of pins and needles, the wave of tinglies that move through our body. Now they're just going to come out of nowhere. And it's going to be, again, it's an energetic adjustment. It's a, let's call it new energy force moving through the meridian channels of our physical form. It's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to be very quick, very sudden, but pay attention to when it happens, what you were thinking about, what you were doing, who you were with, there's some sort of connection there that allowed you to be in the time in the space where you were open to receiving the energies, where there was a shift in your mind space, a shift in your emotions, if you will. Something is happening in your physical vessel in order to allow these very strong, very penetrating energies to actually have room and space to enter into your physical form, thus creating the domino effect of the, let's call it energetic frequencies moving through those meridian channels that give you the physical experience of goosebumps, of the, you know, temperature shift through you, of those pins and needles, of those little tinglies taking place in your physical body. I feel like we're going to have uh, cold feet. Doesn't matter if you're running hot or not, we're having cold feet. Why is that? Well, because we're growing towards a action point and we are essentially having cold feet about it. The egoic intellect is so caught up in trying to keep us alive that no change is safe for us right now. And again, I, I hope everybody understands when I say egoic programming, what that actually means. Our physical body has its own operating system. And the whole point of that operating system is to keep the physical body alive. And when we, in our mind space, in our emotions, think about branching out of the tried, tested, true boundaries that we know that we're safe in to explore different options, different opportunities for us to expand upon our lives and make our lives better what that signals and again that's operating from higher self what that signals to the egoic programming that rules over the physical body is whoop no no there's danger there's danger there we don't know what to expect you could die you could die implementing a new routine for your day-to-day -day life don't even bother you could die okay don't 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 try to eat better foods, you could die, okay? 
don't get rid of that toxic relationship. You could die, right? Sometimes staying in the discomfort because it's predictable is the best choice for the egoic programming to make. Thus, when the higher self is pushing us to grow, to heal, to expand, to try something new, to branch out, the egoic programming kicks in. It's like, whoa, whoa, danger. Nope, 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 nope. We have to do a GSA report before we can even dabble into that particular territory. Like we have not had time to think about all the things that could go wrong, right? That's the egoic programming. And so like we're at this particular point right now where we're about to override that particular egoic programming by taking an action, by making a move, by making a choice, by making a decision that brings us out of this uncomfortable holding pattern of quote unquote safety, which is just ridiculous to think that any of us are truly safe in this physical world. Uh, and I mean that with as I'm not trying to doom and gloom, but take a good look around everything in this earth plane is designed to kill you. There's a reason for that. Video games, okay? Video games are, are not meant for you to win and beat. We are in a video game. The video game is designed for you to lose, for you to die, for you to give all of your energy and attention to all the external aspects of what this construct of the video game has been made out of so that you're not growing and healing and trying to break out of the video game, okay? So the cold feet, is exactly that. We're about to make a, a huge leap forward and, and the egoic programming is kicking in and being like, oh, I don't know. Sounds like you're gonna die. Maybe you should just stay in this, you know, this certain hell hole. You know the kind of hell that you're going to get, you know, if you stay here and make no changes. You don't know what's out there ready to kill you in new foreign territory. You just don't know. It's better to stay here. Anyways, the cold feet going to be an indicator on where it is that you really have to work harder to override that fear-based egoic programming and take that action, make that move, make that step forward. Even if your feet are cold, even if your legs are shaking, even if you're in a state of fear in doing so, you got to move forward. Okay, so um, we talked last week and it's amazing to me. It's really funny, actually. Uh, I talked last week in the Ascension forecast about like the spit, like the change in our spit and like the taste of our spit. And it was so funny how many people reached out this week and were like, you know what? I listened to that um, last week and, you know, kind of stood out to me. But I thought to myself, like, you know, that's weird. That's not going to happen. And then like Wednesday, Thursday happened. And for whatever reason, people were in different situations where suddenly their mouths were filling up with this like thin, gross, gaggy, weird tasting spit. And they laughed because it was like, oh, my oh, my God, like she was right about the spit. Now, I, I, I take no pleasure in being right about weird ass shit. OK, it's just it is what it is. Um, let me just kind of give you a general consensus of the experiences of the people that reached out to me to say that they had the experience with the gross ass spit. A lot of it was in situations where they were interacting with people that they were on the inside just disgusted with. Okay, so we all find ourselves in this like torturous small talk with fake ass asleep zombies. Okay, and I mean that in the nicest way because again, y'all know that I don't really... I don't really promote the whole us versus them type of thing because that's just furthering the division that we're here to unify and grow up and grow out of. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes it is very torturous to deal and interact with certain people that aren't on the same wavelength, that are stuck in this, you know, little small talk, chit chat hell. And what I noticed is, is that a lot of people had this spit experience when they were literally choking and gagging on the words that they really wanted to say to these people, which is basically like, shut up, right? Like you're ridiculous, like wake up, look around. Um, but of course can't due to social norms. And so a lot of the instances were very much in alignment with being disgusted and grossed out with the conversation, with the interaction that they themselves had to mask and kind of, you know, participate in that falsity 
uh, to just get through the interaction. And then again, like, you know, gagging on their spit while trying to do so. So I thought that that was pretty interesting just to understand that this is, you know, these are the like-minded situations and circumstances that people were having this experience in. Now, I don't think that the spit thing is going to continue. However, the weird film, the grossness, the, the, I don't even know how to explain it. I call it the morning breath film that stays with you throughout the day. That's the best way that I can explain it. I don't think it's like the thin, I'm about to puke spit as much as it is like, why can't I get the taste of dirt out of my mouth? And again, we're in an earth season. We're low on water element. We're dehydrated. Again, this is your reminder to keep the water to you. Um, it's just a weird dynamic that is just taking over our mouths. And once Mercury moves into Taurus energy and we literally eat dirt in Taurus energy, we're likely going to have that weird film, that gross taste uh, be very dominant in our experiences. Now, that being said, digestive system is going through a, I'm going to call it regenerative type of restart. Again, we're taking the the car out to test drive, so to speak, here this week. Um, but we're going to have a lot of heartburn, a lot of acid reflux, a lot of gassiness, air bubbles up against the ribs. Why? Because our solar plexus is right there. That's our will. That's the strength and who it is that we are and what it is that we have to do. And that is going through its own little cycle right now. And therefore, it's going to disrupt our digestion. Um, digestion has always been a very strong I'm going to say ascension symptom because think of the amount of nerves that are in our digestive systems and nerves respond to electricity and electricity responds to electromagnetic frequency and that electromagnetic frequency is coming in off the sun. Thus, ascension symptoms. Okay. Uh, so that like weird ass film, that grossness in our mouth is also going to have an effect on our voice. Our voices are going through a frequency adjustment as well. And I don't think that it's like the clearing of the throat as much as it is maybe like a dry cough or again, feeling very dry in our throat, like we're trying to swallow sand or dirt. I mean, that's a good analogy for it. Um, and that's going to make us go from very hungry, wanting to eat everything to very nauseous. Now we talked about the hunger and the cravings just due to Taurus season being very indulgent and the creature comforts. We get that. But the, you know, the acid reflux, that air bubble, the solar plexus going through its thing, probably going to lead more to nausea than hunger. And you could have a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, or you could be hungry as hell and eat and eat and eat. And then suddenly while eating, turn to nausea and feel like you're going to puke it all up. Now, that's that's not something I wish for any of us. It's not something I'm wishing upon anyone, but it is just it is going to happen. Our digestive system is just flip flopping here this week. Um, back to the mouth for a second. Last week, we talked about like the dry lips and semi burning lips from being so dry. I feel like the lips this week are going to either crack or peel or split or have itchiness around them. They are healing, but this is going to be a very uncomfortable part of the healing process. And again, when Mercury moves into Taurus energy, we're very deliberate with our words. So we're not going to be speaking as much. Um, we're only really, you know, we're only going to talk on things that are worthy of being talked about. And especially where plans and, and strategies are concerned, we're willing to talk about that. We're not really willing to talk about anything that isn't important. You know, we're not hearing, we're not talking to hear ourselves talk, so to speak. So with that, you know, we're keeping our mouth closed a little bit more, let's say, thus the film, the weirdness, the, the, the grossness in our mouths. But I just feel like the lips themselves have contained so much energy over this last month, month and a half, especially with Mercury going through Aries energy and that spitfire that all of us had available to us to really like, you know, use our tongue as a sword, so to speak, and really create a lot of pain and trauma and wounds with our speech. Many of us have bit our tongue, tried to resist that energy, thus the inflammation with our gums and our teeth and, you know, the friction and the rigidity in our jaw, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, but the lips peeling or breaking or splitting or being itchy, 
that means that we're we're looking to kind of get over it. We're growing through it, if you will. And we are moving into that healing stage. But again, sometimes things need to get worse before they get better. We're going to have those eye crusties or eye goopies a little bit more frequently throughout this week. Again, Taurus season, especially the end of Taurus season, like we're sleepy, we're tired, like we're exhausted. It's been very, very heavy, very weighted. It's been hard to get up and go. Um, we're putting like triple the amount of physical energy into getting our asses up off the couch and just doing the small little things like the normal things that normally we don't even think that hard about doing. It just is taking an extra layer of energy to do these small things. And so the, the sleepiness, yeah, we're sleeping good. Well, many of us are anyways. We're sleeping a little deeper. We're sleeping a little bit longer. That's all well and good. But I just feel like the eye crusties and the eye goopies are coming back in a way because first of all, we're tired, we're exhausted. We are, you know, essentially rubbing the dirt out of our eyes um, from Taurus season. But there's still some crud that we're having a hard time seeing taking place in our lives right now, especially where we're not as clear on the path, the plan, the strategy as we were hoping to be at this particular point. There's definitely some aspects, especially with the old version of self, the old realm and reality that's still in existence that we have to kind of alter and restructure and redesign this new sense of self around. There's just some roadblocks. There's some things going on in our life that we just don't want to see that we're trying to, you know, minimize that we're trying to talk ourselves through and it's just not working. And so it manifests with the crud in our eyes, with the eye goopies, like we're just not seeing clearly. We're not seeing, you know, we have no choice but to see the crud, if you will, um, face the crud, if you will. Hopefully, as Mercury moves, you know, out of his post retrograde shadow period, as he moves in this Taurus energy, as we put the tunnel vision goggles on, things will become a little bit more clear and we won't have that, you know, rubbing of the eyes or needing to, you know, get the crusties out or the goopies out, whatever the case may be. Um, that will probably better as we move into Gemini season. But as we move through the final degrees of Taurus season, is we're going to we're going to reach some turbulence. Hate to tell you. It's going to be a little bit bumpy before it gets better. But we're all in this together. We're not doing this alone. Anytime that you feel alone, take a stop by, read through the comment section. You'll realize that you're not the only one going through it. Um, we actually have more in common than we do in difference. And sometimes it's just hard to see that. And again, hard to see that with gunk and goop in your eyes. So clean those babies out. Anywho, guys, I'm just taking a quick look at my list. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about. So I feel like I am going to wrap it up. I just want to thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you for showing up for yourself. I want to thank you for doing the work. I want to thank you for continuing to be the warrior type of spirit that we need to be alive and well on the earth plane at this time. I want to thank you for continuing to be on the bandwagon because again, we have a lot more power in numbers than we do as individuals, but sometimes we need to do the work on ourselves as individuals in order to contribute the kind of power that the collective needs. So we all have to continue to do the work. I thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon. <music>